Okay, so we've been looking at the classification of time series. And uh, all time series, all time data, all filters, um, you know, really all uh, spatial series, uh, you can divide them into causal and anti-causal. And then of the causal, some of them are uh, realizable, which means that they hold to, uh, uh, to at least some parts of physics, such as uh, being uh, limited in their total energy. And then um, some realizable functions are what we are going to call minimum phase. Um, and then um, some uh, minimum phase functions are uh, known in exploration seismology as impedance functions, which are what give us the uh, uh, reflection coefficients and the, uh, the two-way travel times to the interfaces with those coefficients. So our question, of course, is what is minimum phase? And let's consider this, uh, uh, this filter, OK? Uh, 1 minus 1 over alpha z. And um, alpha, of course, can be complex. And it's going to have uh, this, uh, this filter, f of z, the f of z polynomial, has a 0, you know, where the polynomial evaluates to 0 at z0, that's the root, equal to alpha, the complex number. And let's look at uh, inverting this filter. One, you know, what do we get with 1 over f? All right. Now here on the left, I'm, I'm describing the, uh, uh, the filter as having a 0 um, z0, which is outside the unit circle. And you can see it's at uh, you know, roughly 1 fifth, 1 quarter uh, pi. So, uh, you know, one quarter of the uh, Nyquist frequency would be its omega zero, and uh, so we put in the uh, polynomial one over one minus one over alpha z, and we start dividing it out. Okay, so um, clearly, uh, you know, I mean, of course, the uh, it's it's essentially an infinite series. You know, one plus uh, one over alpha times z plus one over alpha squared times z squared plus 1 over alpha to the third power times z to the third power plus, and I left out the alpha here, I think, um, 1 over alpha to the nth power times z to the nth power. So this inverse is only meaningful if it's only finite. Okay, We can only define the inverse filter and make it work if the um, absolute value of alpha or the magnitude of alpha as a complex number is greater than 1. Okay, That's going to allow. Uh, these terms, you know, as we go out to larger time, larger um, powers of z, then uh, the coefficients are going to fall off, and you know, at some point we'll be able to call it good. I mean, it may be too 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 long, but it's not going to be infinite. Okay, so the um, the inverse of the filter f is stable if z naught, if its root is outside the unit circle. All right. So right away, that gives us a criterion under which that we can use to define um, useful um, filters that have useful inverses. If z naught is inside the unit circle, if we derive, you know, this filter which has, you know, all kinds of uh, roots. If a single root is inside the unit circle, I mean, that filter is still perfectly uh, usable, but it won't be invertible. All right. So you keep all the zeros out. Uh, outside the unit circle, and you have an invertible filter. So we can generalize this, right? We compose our filter out of a uh, multiplicative series of these uh, two term polynomials. Each polynomial, um, index i, has a, a root alpha sub i, okay? Um, and uh, then we can invert it uh, via the multiplicative series, which is. Um, uh, also has uh, uh, now uh, uh, we put the polynomial on the denominator and uh, these roots turn in these zeros uh, these roots at alpha sub i turn into poles at uh, alpha sub i and you know we can build up um, any filter in fact any time series any data you know with any spectrum uh, we can. You know, if we could find a way, we could factor that and find all the roots, okay, all the zeros. So we we just need combinations of different zeros 
to um, uh, to be able to have a uh, um, uh, any filter we we want. All right. So now, here's the first definition of what it means for a filter, a time series, to be minimum phase. A minimum phase filter has all zeros outside the unit circle. All right. So um, that's a, a very basic definition, and uh, it works for everything. Um, and here are uh, all the all the different definitions of what minimum phase means. Okay, and these are all um, these are all equivalent. Okay, they are uh, uh, necessary and sufficient. Okay, all mutually necessary and sufficient. So, any one of these, if any one of these properties is true, the other properties are true. So. Uh, first, as we saw, all zeros outside the unit circle, minimum phase. Um, causal, with a causal inverse, minimum phase. Okay? Uh, we'll also examine what is, you know, where does this uh, term minimum phase come from? And there is a minimum phase property that these will have. Um, the minimum phase uh, uh, time series also uh, impl imply minimum delay. The energy that arrives arrives most rapidly. Okay. Uh, also, uh, an implication of minimum phase. You know, these are all corollaries of each other. The amplitude spectrum is the Hilbert transform of the phase spectrum. Okay. So, you take the phase spectrum, the the phase at uh, uh, at uh, each uh, frequency omega. You you apply the Hilbert transform, capital H, and and you get uh, the amplitude spectrum. The um, the square root of the power spectrum at each uh, at each frequency, and it goes the other way too. You can inverse Hilbert transform the amplitude spectrum, and you'll get the phase spectrum uh, with a little bit of manipulation. So uh, uh, now, of course, I haven't talked about the Hilbert transform yet, and I I will, um, and uh, so you'll find out what that what that is too. Okay. Let's talk about the minimum phase property itself and where this name comes from. Let's consider two filters. All right, uh, we've got f one of z, which is uh, one minus z over z naught. Okay, and then we have f two of z, uh, which is one over z naught conjugate minus z. Okay, so. Um, now let's see. I'm not sure about the conjugate mark I, I made there. Um, no, I think that uh, uh, that can't be uh, uh, a conjugate. Okay, so x out the conjugate there. Um, so it's just one over z naught minus z. All right. So um, <clears throat> let's put in the Fourier definition of z um, <clears throat> and allow well and and allow. Uh, uh, you know, really, this is just the polar form on the z-plane of uh, the uh, that represents the uh, the root z naught. All right, so we have uh, z naught equal to rho, which is the inverse of the distance. Uh, no, that's the uh, the distance uh, from uh, the origin of the complex point uh, times uh, e to the power of i times omega zero. <clears throat> So we have uh, it's a it's an imaginary exponential an Euler exponential, and also uh, we'll note that we make rho greater than one. Okay, so uh, f one has a zero at z equals z naught, which is rho uh, e to the i omega zero, and f two has a zero at z equals one over. Well, I guess it's still conjugate. Yeah, one over. Yeah, it must be uh, one over conjugate z naught. And uh, it's uh, uh, one over rho now e to the i omega zero. Okay, and because we've taken the conjugate, uh, we actually keep those uh, at the same omega zero, right? If we didn't take the conjugate, then we would be at minus uh, omega zero. But these are uh, polar reciprocals. Our our z naught is here, okay, outside the unit circle, and um, the um, <clears throat> Uh, F two has its zero inside the unit circle at the same frequency omega zero, 
but um, at uh, um, uh, you know at, at, at less distance uh, from the origin and inside the unit circle. So we know from our definitions that f1 is minimum phase, and f2 is not. Okay. Now let's uh, finish transforming f1 and f2 the, to the frequency domain. So we take the Fourier definition of z, z equals e to the i omega. <coughs> And uh, we have z naught equal to e to the i omega zero, and so f one is equal to one minus this is the uh, the minimum phase one one minus one over rho times e to the power of i times the quantity omega minus omega zero, and then f two is uh, e to the i omega zero times the quantity one over rho times e to the i omega minus omega zero, okay that quantity. And uh, let's find the uh, the power spectrum of uh, of both of these. Okay, so we just uh, you know take the magnitude squared of uh, of f one. All right, and uh, you know multiplying it out, it's one plus one over rho squared minus two over rho times the cosine of omega minus omega zero. Okay, and that's a very nice definition of the uh, of the power spectrum. And in fact, I put a red box around this because. Uh, you're going to use this in lab two, lab three, uh, maybe even later, um, to uh, because here's a, a very nice uh, and very general representation of the you know you have a filter which is composed of one um, which is composed of of one um, uh, root, and you ask the question, okay, what's its spectrum, okay? And the, you know the answer is right here. Um, so uh, now f two, okay, the magnitude squared of f two of omega one plus one over rho squared minus two over rho cosine omega minus omega zero, which oh that's the same as the spectrum of f one, okay. So uh, right away we can see that if if and, and you know alpha omega zero uh, rho they're whatever we want, but we get the same. The same spectrum, okay. You know, we have a filter that's at any any spot. All right. So if two filters are polar reciprocals, they have the same power spectrum. Okay. So the uh, you know where where are they different? I mean, okay, these two filters are different. One's you know the one with the the zero outside the unit circle is minimum phase, and the one with the zero inside the unit circle is not minimum phase and not usefully invertible. Um, uh, the the power spectra are the same, and thus the amplitude spectra are the are the same. Where's the difference? Difference is in the phase spectra. Okay, and uh, so here's a definition of, of the phase spectrum, um, which uh, uh, it's the uh, uh, is a capital phi here, phi of omega. That's the phase at each frequency, is equal to the inverse tangent of the imaginary part of the Fourier transform. Uh, of the filter, you know, uh, at at that same frequency omega, divided by the real part of the Fourier transform of the filter at omega, right? So, so you know, at the Fourier the Fourier transform of f, you know, f of omega is just a at, at one omega, it's one complex number, and um, so if you take the imaginary part, divide by the real part, take the inverse tangent. You know that gives you the phase of at that frequency, okay? And so just like there's a frequency series, right, which is the power spectrum, there is a frequency series which is a phase spectrum. And uh, uh, you know a power spectrum obviously is all real, and I hope it's clear here that a phase spectrum is all real. So you have, you know, you have an amplitude and phase of a um, of a spectral of a Fourier uh, Fourier component, uh, or you can represent it as an imaginary part and a real part of a Fourier Fourier component. Uh, same amount of information, just uh, you know, kind of on different axes. Okay. So now, um, you know, let's uh, look at at uh, uh, f one. Right here's f1, here's uh, f2. Let's let's take the real part of f1, okay? And we just you know break down the imaginary exponential into um, cosine omega minus omega zero plus 
uh, plus uh, I sine of the quantity omega minus omega 0. right? And so the real part is just going to be 1, my, which is real, of course, minus 1 over rho times the cosine of omega minus omega 0. And the imaginary part of f1 um, is minus 1 over rho sine of omega minus omega 0. So um, uh, now let me, let me uh, just kind of graph this out. Okay? Um, and I think that's the, uh, the easiest thing to do. Uh, so we have, um, uh, I'm going to plot a, um, um, I'm going to plot a, uh, uh, a parametric circle, right? Because if, if my parameter is omega, right, if I take all possible omegas, uh, and then I have this constant omega zero, you know, whatever it is, okay, uh, then obviously what I'm doing is I have a circle with um, uh, with radius one over rho, okay, right? Because so I have one over rho cosine of omega minus omega zero, and I have one over rho sine times uh, uh, sine of omega minus omega zero, okay. And it, you know I have to admit it took me several years to understand this graph of phase. Uh, I didn't get it when I took this class from my advisor. Um, so um, it's, it's, uh, you'll be way ahead of me uh, and not have that delay if you study this carefully and make sure you understand it. And I'd be happy to, uh, uh, you know, we could, we could run some numbers and build up the plot. You know, what we're basically doing is we're, we're in the, the z-plane here, OK? Well, actually, it'd probably be better if I don't call it the z-plane. Okay, we're plotting an indi you know, we're plotting individual Fourier components. You know, uh, the real part of f1 versus the imaginary part of the Fourier transform of, of f1. Okay, um, and uh, we're plotting them in the complex plane, and we're going to plot them for you know a range of omegas, right? Because that's kind of the free parameter here. Okay, so the uh, um, the radius is one over rho of the circle, and the circle is located. Okay, the circle is is located uh, at one on the real axis, right? Um, you know what the center of the circle is. Uh, uh, you know it's halfway between uh, when omega minus omega zero is zero and when omega minus omega zero is uh, is uh, pi, right? And so you put those values in and uh, average them, and you're going to get one, right? Because it's offset by by one here. Okay. So there's uh, there's the center of the circle. Okay. And the center of the circle is at one and zero imaginary. Um, and wherever omega zero is, okay, you know maybe it's here. Maybe omega zero happens to be um, happens to be uh, three quarter pi or something. Two thirds pi is what this looks like. Okay, and um, so we start uh, with omega equal to zero. All right, and so here we are at, at this point. And then um, as we increase omega, uh, it's going to rotate around and fill and and you know go around this this unit circle. Okay. Wherever it uh, wherever it is. Okay. Now, where's the phase? Well, the phase is the imaginary part, which is this upright green line. Okay. Divided by the real part. Okay. Which is the uh, the the flat green line here. And then uh, we take the inverse tangent. So that's going to give us this this little angle in here, uh, which I've written a, a small Greek phi for. Okay. So uh, kind of. Uh, uh, you know, as we track this point around, you know, uh, as we continue counterclockwise around the circle, that angle is going to decrease and it's going to reach zero. Then it's going to go negative, and it's going to get to some mat. You know, over here at where the where the kind of cone is uh, uh, tangent to the circle, it's going to get to uh, it's going to get to some you know most negative value of of phi, and it's going to come back around and phi's Going to be increasing towards zero. Phi will hit zero when when the point uh, you know the component 
is, is here. Uh, and then as we continue to increase the frequency, it's going to rotate up here towards the maximum phi. Okay? And as you might guess, you're going to have some kind of sinusoidal oscillation. You know, so this axis here, this horizontal axis to the right, is the omega axis. Okay? And what I'm plotting here in, in, in black is the, uh, uh, is, is the, the phase spectrum, okay? the phase phi, at different values of omega. So this is the phase spectrum. And as we go around the circle, you know, from omega equals 0 to omega equals 2 pi, okay, we go you know, from 0 on this axis to 2 pi on this axis. You know, we go around, we come back up through, and we get back to, um, uh, back to where we started. Okay? Now here I started at you know, uh, 0 uh, omega happens to be at the maximum. That doesn't have to be true. Um, but you know, for illustrations, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's still the same thing. The final phase is same is the same as the initial phase. Okay, so the phase is limited. Okay, remember this is F one. This is the minimum phase filter. Okay, and its phase spectrum is bounded. Phi of omega is bounded, and in fact, it's periodic. Okay, and and one over rho, right? Uh, here's, here's the critical thing. Rho was greater than 1. That's how we defined it. 1 over rho is less than 1, therefore. And so the, uh, the, circle, uh, the circle never touches the origin here. Okay? The origin, remember, is where we're calculating this angle phi. All right, so now let's, let's look at F2. Okay? And uh, I, I'm sorry, I've confused the, uh, uh, the drawing here with all these, uh, all these lines. Okay, so um, uh, F two is from the zero that's inside the unit circle. The real part is, uh, you know, we we I'm, I'm not going to worry about the constant. It's some constant times uh, the quantity one minus rho cosine uh, omega minus omega zero, and the imaginary part is some constant k times uh, uh, minus rho uh, times the sine. Of omega minus omega zero, okay, and the um, uh, the uh, uh, and the constant, of course, uh, you know, falls out when you take the imaginary part and divide it by the real part, right? So uh, uh, rho is greater than one, right? That's how we defined it, and now we have we have that means the the radius of the circle, right? The radius of the circle in the phase diagram here, the radius of the circle. Is greater than one, but you know still, right? The center of the circle is only offset from the origin by one, right? There it is. It's offset by one, but the radius is greater than one, so the circle wraps the origin, and that means as we can compute these phi's, right? We 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 come here, here. You know, we're rotating around on the unit circle, okay? We're uh, as we wrap around. We're wrapping around, and phi just gets larger and larger. Okay, so you know whatever happens, um, uh, you know uh, uh, the phase spectrum just keeps increasing. It just keeps winding around the origin of the phase diagram here. Okay, and so if we plot, you know, phase phi versus uh, omega, okay, from zero to two pi. You know, we find that uh, the final phase is higher than the starting phase. You know, going once around the circle, and that is um, that is a problem. Okay, that's not minimum phase. So we have th this is the uh, the um, this is the crucial observation. Okay, so everywhere the phase of F two. And at any frequency is going to be greater than the phase of F1 at any frequency. Okay? So always, this is where the term comes from, F1 has the minimum phase. Okay? Now, 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 the minimum phase of what? Okay? All, uh, uh, the minimum phase um, um, filter F1 has the minimum phase of all the filters, all the time series, that have the same spectrum. Okay? Remember these polar reciprocal 
these polar reciprocal uh, um, uh, filters, okay, these polar reciprocal uh, zeros creating two different filters, okay, they had the same spectrum. So we have, you know, with just one zero, we can create uh, another uh, filter which has the same spectrum, and the one with the zero outside the unit circle has the minimum phase. Okay. So for more complex filters, okay, right, we just have a multiplicative series, right? The filter in f of z, right, is just a multiplicative series times uh, uh, one minus z over z sub i, where z sub i is the uh, the root, um, you know, index i, right? There's going to be some some number of roots, and uh, as many as we want, we can just put them together as multiplicative series, <clears throat> and uh, you know, so we can have these simple filters, you know, f sub i, um, and uh, add them up multiplicatively. Okay, and uh, take a look at this. Okay, the each, uh, um, you know, we take the polar form of the uh, uh, of the spectra, right? Instead of the, the or the polar form of the Fourier transform. Okay, instead of having a uh, uh, a real and imaginary part of the Fourier transform, okay, uh, at each frequency omega, we've got an amplitude spectrum, an amplitude value at each at each omega, and we have a phase spectrum that gives us a phase, you know, phi sub i at each frequency omega. So our our uh, our complex you know spectrum is a sub i at omega times e to the i phi uh, sub i uh, at omega. Um, and so our multiplicative series, okay, is uh, now uh, you know we're multiplying a sub i um, uh, at omega. You know, we multiply all them together, and we also multiply e to the i phi sub i uh, at omega. And um, uh, so we we put all that together, right, and we get a multiplicative series of all the amplitude spectra. So you know we we build our our, our complicated filter or our data set or you know whatever we build out of these simple uh, these simple filters you know each one with with one root and uh, and we're just going to be multiplying all their amplitude spectra okay now what happens to the phase spectra well the phase spectra the phases are in the uh, the exponent here and so they just add right you have uh, e to the uh, i phi one uh, uh, plus, uh, times e to the i uh, phi two, and so you get phi one. You know the the result is e to the i uh, times the quantity phi one plus phi two. Okay, so the amplitudes multiply, the phases add. Okay, um, so uh, the uh, the final um, uh, the final uh, uh, phase. Is the uh, is the initial phase right? If you have a, if if all these filters, all these roots are outside the unit circle, then they're all going to come back to the initial phase. So the final phase, you know, with everything included, is going to be the initial phase. And then if you have any zeros inside the unit circle, you got to add two pi, right? So it'd be two pi times the number of zeros inside the unit circle. Um, so that's how the phase spectra work. Okay. Now. Um, Here's the here's the critical insight. You can always find a minimum phase filter that has the same power spectrum as a filter that is not minimum phase. All right, except when the zeros are on the unit circle. So if you if you have a zero on the unit circle, then uh, you got a problem, and that's why um, uh, you know that's why um, um, you know you can't have a uh, um, we can't define a minimum phase filter for a, um, a zero uh, uh, that is uh, <coughs> that is uh, uh, on the unit circle. Okay. I mean, obviously, if the zero is inside the unit circle, it's it's not a minimum phase filter. All right. But uh, all right. So um, um, that's uh, that's a brilliant insight. Okay. You have a desired spectrum. Okay, and you want to find the the filter time series. Okay, to convolve that that desired filter. 
All right, and uh, there are many reasons why you would want to convolve it with a minimum phase uh, filter time series. Okay, um, and so for that desired power spectrum, you can always find a minimum phase filter that has that desired power spectrum. All right. Now, now what happens? What happens when you um, when you have a a zero for a filter that's on the unit circle? Okay, so at that think of, think of this. Okay, that filter is going to completely remove, okay, all of the input energy at the frequency where that zero sits on the unit circle. All right, and that's you know so that filter is not going to be invertible. You know you've you've destroyed the information, so you've you know, at least theoretically you've got to leave a tiny bit of of that uh, frequency component that's. Uh, uh, that's at that frequency. You got to move that that zero just a tiny bit outside the unit circle, okay, for the filter to be invertible. If you don't have um, if you don't have any energy left, then the inversion you know is going to be unconstrained at that at that frequency you know where the zero sat on the unit circle. So um, you know right away we see that uh, you know filters that have zeros uh, on the unit circle are also not. Invertible and not minimum phase. Okay. Now there's the question. Uh, you know, uh, we have uh, you know the real world. We're applying filters, and we have uh, uh, if we have two filters. Okay, uh, and and a lot of the processing we do. You know, we we we're, we're going through with multiple filters, right? So we might have two filters. So we have f of z and g of z. They're both minimum phase. Okay. Uh, and uh, they're, you know, they're, we know they're all um, f and g are both composed uh, solely of zeros that are outside the unit circle. Well, then very naturally, f of z times g of z is also going to be minimum phase because there's still, you know, we haven't added any zeros inside the unit circle just by multiplying the two. So if we have cascaded filters, you know, we take our input first, we apply g, then we apply f, okay. We can still retain the minimum phase property. All right. Now, what if what if the filter is you know not being done in the computer, but we're regarding you know some process that happens in the Earth as a filter, like uh, the process of spherical divergence or reflection? You know, those can be expressed as filters. Okay. But uh, you know, real processes are are not well known necessarily, and they could be noisy. Okay. They can they, essentially, they can they can produce results that are unpredictable. All right. So we add. What if we add a noisy or unknown filter, call it U, unknown, to our minimum phase filter? Okay. So we have a filter process. We know the whole thing is minimum phase. That's well under control. But um, we uh, uh, we have some unknown effects uh, U. Okay. That are are not necessarily going to be minimum phase. Okay. One now one thing that I that I am going to constrain here still is that U is still causal. All right, and that's okay because uh, you know we still have lots of, of causal. Um, you know, ca causality is obeyed by everything in the physical world. So if it's a real, you know, if this unknown filter is supposed to be modeling some some you know real physical phenomenon, then causality is still assured. Okay, no problem there. All right. So you know the question then is how much of this noisy unknown filter U can we add before the uh, uh, before the result is uh, the sum is not minimum phase? Okay. So we have uh, you know let's let's factor it. G. Um, we have two filters here. We have F and G. And uh, you know, factoring uh, we we have f plus u, right? So I'm going to factor f out of this, and so I have f times the filter one plus u over f. Okay. Um, now uh, um, you know here here is where uh, of course we put f on the denominator. That means it has to be invertible. But since f is minimum phase, no problem. It's invertible. Okay. So um, we can continue. All right, so one plus u over f is now is now called g. All right, if uh, all right, so now we know that if uh, you know we have f, so uh, f is minimum phase, and we know that if if we can determine that g is minimum phase, 
then you know the whole thing is going to be you know f f times g is uh, minimum phase, and then so will be f plus u. Okay. So uh, g is one plus u uh, g at omega at omega is one plus u at omega divided by f at omega. All right, <clears throat> and and uh, you know we have uh, we have our our uh, um, you know these are you know the the g the one the the u the f these are all just complex numbers. You know we we look at some some particular value of omega right. Same for all these, and and they're just complex numbers, okay? And and so uh, uh, as you might expect, you know, the filter, the inverse filter of f, is again going to be wrote is going to have a phase spectrum. It's going to be rotating around this uh, this circle, right? The inverse, you know, if if um, if if f is uh, is minimum phase, then uh, one over f is also minimum phase, and so. We have this circle that doesn't touch the origin, and thus uh, the phase is, is constrained, you know, to be from uh, the phi here or minus phi. Okay, it has, you know, there's there's a maximum excursion from zero phase. Okay, right. We're only subtending a certain angle uh, at the origin here, wherever we are, and we add uh, u over, you know. It, okay, so here's the circle that defines that. And so long as whatever we add here, you know, it can go anywhere, but if it stays within that circle, okay, then we're okay. All right. So G can wander throughout this this disk here, this this unit sphere or this this circle, okay, but it can't go outside the circle. Now, what does that mean? That means that the magnitude of u at omega divided by f at omega has got to stay uh, less than one. And and I mean obviously if if the wandering is over here, you know, away from the origin, then we'll still have minimum phase. It, but if the wandering was over here toward the origin, then we would not have minimum phase. So uh, you know by constraining it to be within the circle with this with this criterion here, u over f being uh, less than one. We have uh, what I would call a sufficient, but it's not a necessary condition. Okay, uh, but if if uh, uh, you know, but you have to, you know, it have to be pretty tricky to uh, figure out criteria that allow this to 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 stay minimum phase if it's wandering outside the circle. But if 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 this condition applies, then um, you're uh, you're in great shape. All right, you have a minimum phase filter. All right, sufficient. A sufficient condition. Minimum phase is is preserved if the amplitude spectrum of noise is everywhere at every frequency. Right. This is this is this has to be true at every value of omega. At every frequency, the amplitude spectrum of the noise is everywhere less than the amplitude spectrum of the signal f. And that that is actually quite tricky to uh, arrange. That means uh, you need a, a broadband um, um, signal. Okay, or broadband filter. All right, so uh, that 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 can be tricky, uh, right? And and if the uh, you know this this won't be true if the uh, if the filter you know it takes too much out, right? If the filter really uh, tone you know really cuts down the energy at any given frequency, then its uh, its amplitude spectrum is going to be pretty small, and. Um, and so that's kind of a lesson, you know. If we're if we're too severe with our filters, if we, you know, if we cut out all the energy anywhere, or even if we cut out, you know, uh, down, if we cut down below the noise proportion, the noise level, right? Then we're cutting too much, and we'll 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 give up our minimum phase uh, properties. So good lesson there. We want our filters to be more gentle and not so severe. Okay. Uh, another property of minimum phase filters: min minimum energy delay. All right, this is from uh, Robinson, uh, Robinson and Tritill, um, <clears throat> early, you know, 50 years ago, uh, uh, real innovators in uh, seismic uh, exploration uh, through uh, this kind of time series work. Um, let's see, Enders A. Robinson, I think is his name. Um, and here's one way of expressing uh, minimum energy delay. The energy summed from time zero to any time is greater than or equal to that 
of any other wavelet having the same spectrum. Okay, so again, there's this idea that you've got one spectrum, uh, but but then you uh, you know you can have you you have uh, one you know amplitude spectrum. Okay, and there's a whole you know a whole set of of uh, of different uh, waves of different uh, time series that have that same amplitude spectrum. Okay, and the one that that has the minimum energy delay will be the minimum phase uh, um, time series. Okay, uh, another uh, another way of saying is that energy arrives most rapidly as possible in minimum phase filters. Okay. So uh, let's let's say we have two filters. Okay, uh, F sub min is a minimum phase filter, and F sub max is not a minimum phase filter. I'm not saying it's a maximum phase filter, but it's not a minimum phase one. F sub min and F sub max are identical except for a single zero. You know, so you know, how, however many in this F are are you know there could be hundreds, right? Um, <clears throat> But uh, uh, we construct f sub min to be uh, in the z domain uh, b plus s z, okay, applied to this minimum phase f, and then f sub max is s plus b times z applied to f, okay, and and this one you know because b is greater than s, right, we're going to have the zero outside the unit circle, and uh, with the uh, non-minimum phase one f sub max, the zero is inside the unit circle. Okay, and um, um, you know uh, f is of some some degree, uh, and and b is greater than s. Okay, b is greater than s uh, in uh, in magnitude. I, I probably should have written that. Uh, in here, put magnitude uh, bars around b and s. Okay, b is greater than s. So uh, you know, here's a two. You know, this filter here, uh, you know, the the one that that is not minimum phase has the smaller sample first and the bigger sample second. All right. So a very simple illustration of minimum energy delay. You know, the B, the larger one first, the smaller one second. Okay. Um, now I think you can prove to yourself that the spectrum of B plus S Z is equal to the spectrum of S plus B Z. Okay, that's uh, that you should be able to knock out uh, pretty quickly. Just use the Fourier definition of Z, multiply it out, and uh, uh, all right. So now uh, from the definition of convolution, okay, the F sub min at K is B uh, times F at k plus s times f at k minus 1. f max at k is s times f at k plus b times f at k minus 1. And energy is proportional to, uh, to f squared. right? So f min at k squared is b squared uh, times f at k squared plus 2 s b f at k times f at k minus 1 plus s squared f squared uh, at k minus 1. And then uh, f max at k squared is s squared times f at k squared plus 2 s b f at k f at k minus 1 plus b squared times f at k minus 1 squared. For energy at time t, for energy to time t of f min to be greater than for f max, okay, then this has to hold true, right? As we sum over t, from k equals zero to t, right? We sum f min squared minus f max squared. That's always greater than or equal to zero. Okay? Then that would that would obey the minimum uh, energy delay criterion. All right. So now we look at f min squared at k minus f max squared at k, which is uh, b squared f at k squared plus s squared times f at k minus one squared minus uh, s squared times f at k squared minus b squared times f at k minus 1 squared. All right, And we can factor out b squared minus s squared. Um, and then that's, that's multiplied by the uh, quantity f at k squared minus f at k minus 1 squared. All right, 
So now, now since um, f at, uh, min at 0k squared minus f max at 0k is equal to, you know, just put it in at k equals 0, right? Uh, that's b squared minus s squared at f0, uh, then um, times f0, then we have the sum uh, over all k of uh, uh, f squared uh, um, min minus f max squared is equal to uh, b squared minus s squared times f at k squared. Now, uh, f at k squared is greater than 0. Okay. Uh, and so the question is, you know, does this quantity produce greater than or equal to zero? All right. Well, b is greater than s, so uh, or the magnitude of b is greater than the magnitude of s. Okay. So then, in this way, b squared minus s squared is uh, greater than uh, greater than zero, and the whole thing holds. We have minimum energy delay. We're holding this criterion. And you know the obvious conclusion, right? Um, that this one, you know, here's the minimum phase uh, filter. Here's the one, you know, lone maximum phase, right? And and here uh, that's uh, uh, that's uh, uh, you know f is minimum phase. So uh, uh, you know we have minimum energy delay now. Okay. Um, so uh, minimum phase filters are, are a very useful object. They're, uh, um, they're invertible. Okay, so in the last few minutes here, let me uh, uh, do an application of minimum phase filters. Okay? And this is a, actually a very useful filter called the all-pass filter. Okay? Um, and you might ask, well, I mean, what use is an all-pass filter? Okay? It doesn't change amplitude. You know, it doesn't affect the amplitude at any frequency. It only changes the phase. Well, you might want to do that. Uh, you know, if you've taken uh, some of the uh, uh, classes we've offered here in um, a seismic interpretation, you know that that all um, all uh, uh, seismic data these days are presented as zero phase uh, wavelets. Okay, and you can pick the seismic. Uh, uh, Reflector time right at the center of the most powerful part of the uh, um, the most powerful part of the uh, um, uh, uh, of, of the wavelet, okay, and which which really helps you uh, you know to uh, to identify uh, you know small reflections, okay. So um, uh, you know you might you might take your data. You know, which would be uh, you know coming from an explosion, it would be minimum phase, and you you don't want to change any amplitudes, but you want to massage it to change its phase from say ninety degree phase to zero phase, okay, and so that's what an all pass filter can do. We'll also find out uh, in a few weeks that uh, you know wave propagation is basically an all pass filter, okay. It just it doesn't change the total amount of energy, okay, in the system. It uh, just you know moves it around. Now I you know I know uh, you know there's intrinsic attenuation and uh, uh, and all that, but uh, <coughs> ignoring that and, and looking at basic wave propagation, you really want an all pass filter. Okay, so all pass filters are very very useful. So we have uh, you know an output uh, y y of z is equal to a filter f of z apply, you know, multiplied by x of z, the input. Okay, and um, so uh, uh, let me um, um, uh, let me uh, uh, you know sort of complicate this uh, this relationship here by uh, um, by uh, taking. Uh, um, um, uh, so, so for an all-pass filter, okay, we would have, uh, you know, essentially, uh, uh, if it has, you know, no effect on the amplitude, then we have, uh, uh, okay, so so we want to equate the spectra. We we want the 
the spectrum of the output to be equal to the spectrum of the input. What's the spectrum? Okay, it's y uh, conjugate of 1 over z times y of z. And um, we have uh, 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 x uh, conjugate of 1 over z times x of z. Okay, and we want that to be true because we're applying the filter to uh, x, and it has to be 1. Okay, um, so uh, you know all past filters uh, uh, essentially have an absolute spectrum of one. It's the phase spectrum where things can can be worked on. Okay, like in wave propagation. All right, it's time to um, uh, to stop, and um, uh, I will continue with all past filters tomorrow. <laughs>